All right. Hello, everybody. It's a little after 3.30, so we're going to get started. Um, I wanted to thank you all for attending this session today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, what is a virtual career fair, kind of giving you some uh, quick tips for like a one-on-one -on -one type session. So um, first, I want to just introduce myself. My name is Robert Baricelli. I'm a career development specialist here at West Virginia University. I work in our career services center, which is located downtown in the Mount Lair. Um, and we have a couple of the people that are uh, on the presentation today. Kelly, if you could introduce yourself. Sure, hello, my name's Kelly Stewart. I'm a career development specialist and my pathway is engineering and technology students. Welcome everyone. And may want to mention um, that um, others may want to mute their buttons because I heard some noise there when you were speaking earlier, Rob. Yes, if everybody um, could mute just to make sure that uh, we don't, we are recording this so that other people who maybe aren't able to make the session, uh, they can make it. So if you could please mute to make sure that we can record a good sound throughout and they can hear us okay, okay? Um, and then we also have uh, Lauren, she's one, one of the recruiters for uh, one of the employers that will be attending our STEM career fair uh, later in the month. So if you could please um, introduce yourself, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Um, like Robert said, I'm Laurie Yule. I'm a recruiting coordinator um, from the Wedding Directing Company. Um, I've actually worked for Wedding Turner for about five years now, and we've been recruiting at at WVU for, for years now. So it's nice to be here and get a chance to, uh, to talk to everyone today. All right. Thank you very much. So um, just want to kind of briefly go over what a virtual career fair is. Um, in previous years, if, you, uh, if you've been at WVU for a little bit, you may have attended one of our in-person career fairs, which for the STEM career fair typically happened in the uh, Student Recreation Center. Um, obviously, with us being predominantly virtual this semester, we're having all of our events and presentations like this uh, online for everybody's safety. Um, the online event is gonna be a little bit different. Typically, when you go to attend the career fair, you would walk up to different tables and you might have to wait in line in case it's a uh, an employer that's really popular that you're interested in, you might have to wait there for 10 minutes before you can talk to someone and it would be a big loud room. The one benefit of the virtual career fair is um, you're going to schedule everything in advance. So um, it's all going to be 100% online and it's really an opportunity for you to still interact with employers, whether you're searching for internships, co-op opportunities or full-time employment after graduation. And you're going to be able to interact with them both through video and audio um, aspects and there are also chat aspects as well. So if you didn't attend one of our career fairs in the fall, um, we'll still be using Handshake um, and we're going to go through that a little bit here. So one last thing as we get started, if you do have questions as we're going through the presentation, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat room. Um, we're going to be monitoring that. And if we're not going to address it in the next couple slides, we may address it then. And there will be a set a part of the session at the end where we'll have a QA session. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, you know, everything's going to be online. You don't have to wait in line to talk to a recruiter. You don't have to worry about where you're going to put your book bag in the rec center or any of that type of stuff. Um, so we, but we do want to kind of tell you what to expect, especially if you didn't get to experience uh, one of the fall career fairs. Um, there's two types of sessions that you can interact with um, employers during the virtual career fair. Um, the first type of session is a group session. And that's where an employer will schedule that for those are 30 minutes long and there are up to 50 students can attend at any one time. And the main point of that is the employer is going to be kind of telling you about their organization and um, the positions that may have available or the, the application process. They're gonna use that time differently from employer to employer, but the general thing is they're gonna to try to answer your questions about uh, their organization. Okay. 
Um, so I just want to kind of turn it over to Laura. How do you kind of uh, approach the group session? So what we actually did um, back in the fall, we set up three separate group sessions for the career fair um, that we were a part of in the fall. And we used that time uh, to do a Q&A session, like you said, not necessarily like a, a, a presentation um, as some other platforms allowed, but we also used that time to show more of our recruiting team to the students, because um, unfortunately, with uh, the nature of virtual recruiting, you typically just get only a one-on-one -on -one interaction with one recruiter from that company. As opposed to being in person, you can walk up to the table and see the whole recruiting team that they have there. So we wanted to use those group sessions to get, get the students more introduced to more people who work for us. And also we geared it more towards our new hires as well. In each of those sessions, we had at least three or four of our new hires too, because we, we think that that, that perspective um, is really important uh, to, to have available to students. You know, just hearing things from, from new hires that have come on to work for us was really important to us. Um, real quick, what type of questions would you anticipate students asking during that type of session? It kind of ranges from general questions about our company um, to some things that are a little bit more uh, in depth, like uh, career path questions, because uh, we traditionally have two entry level positions that we recruit for. So what does that mean? What do those positions entail? Um, we also get a lot of questions about our culture, what it's like to to work for the company in general. Um, things like that are, are pretty typical for us. And nothing's really off the table too. We're, we'll field any question, even you know, if it's the, the smallest, smallest question. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. The other type of session that is gonna be uh, available to students, employers during the virtual career fairs are what are called one-on-one -on -one sessions. And those are shorter sessions. They're only for 10 minutes. And that is for one student and one, typically just one representative uh, from whatever the employer agency or company that uh, is registered for the uh, career fair. And that allows you to, you know, talk one-on-one -on -one to promote yourself uh, for that position, maybe ask more specific questions that maybe you didn't feel that comfortable enough asking in the group session. And then the recruiters may ask you some um, more directed questions and direct you on how the application process may go. So um, one important thing is, you know, you may need to make sure you have a resume that's available because that's going to be one of the primary things they're looking for. And you'll want to also have that on your handshake profile. So I want to kind of turn it back over to Laura. What are some of the things that you are looking to interact with students during that one on one session? So for the one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, we really look at those one-on-ones as the very first step in our process. Um, so we focus on four or five uh, main categories, so to speak. So for us being, you know, general contractors, uh, you know, in the construction industry, we want to see just a general interest in construction, or if you're looking for a full-time position, some experience in the construction field. So whatever experience relates you know, to the position that you're interested in. Um, we also look at location um, a lot. It's really important for us as a company to place people where they want to live. Um, so that's something that we wanna open up that conversation about right off the bat. And then uh, given, again, the industry that we're in, travel is also really important uh, to us as well. Uh, being in our field, it's just goes with the job. So we'll start that conversation at that point then. And then we're really just trying to get a first impression um, of personality, professionalism, you know, how students carry themselves in conversation. So it's not, it's a very high level conversation. We're just trying to get to know you um, and, and like I said, Shifley, just the first step as like our go, no go for uh, hopefully eventually a first official interview. Gotcha. 
Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. One quick question I have related to that is, you know, if, if a student registers for one of your one-on-one -on -one sessions, let's say next week, and that's you know weeks before the actual event, is there any things that you do as an employer before that one-on-one -on -one session to prepare for that? Um, as far we we definitely try to reach out to the students ahead of time um, at a minimum to collect some more information um, and get some kind of nitty gritty forms filled out and the process started. And then if we have any additional events that we have going on, info session, other sort of lecture opportunities, things like that, if we have any <clears throat> Excuse me, if we have anybody currently signed up for the career fair, um, we'll reach out to them ahead of time and just let them know what else we have going on that they can attend as well. Gotcha. And that would be both if they attended the one on one or the group session, correct? Or we're ready yeah. for it. Okay. So, mm -hmm. students out there, it's important to register for those events, uh, those sessions early. And don't wait until the last minute to register for them, like the day before the career fair. That was one thing that we saw in the fall. There was a lot of students that sometimes didn't register for a session until the day before or the day of the fair. You know, a lot of these employers are doing their homework on you too, just like you should be doing homework on them. So it's important to register for sessions as far in advance as you can. We're encouraging employers to set up their session schedules, typically by um, February 15th is kind of our target date for them so that you have plenty of time to build your schedule for the virtual career fair um, around whatever your class schedule may be um, on that date. Um, one last thing, uh, Laura, for this, what, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see students make during these sessions? I would say um, leaving a question unasked. Um, definitely it's I, I think it's hugely important to, if, if there's a question that's on your mind, go ahead and ask it, even if you think it's, because um, if it's an important question to you, we definitely want to make sure it gets answered. Okay. All right. There you go. So as I mentioned, one of the things you're going to want to do is, you know, employers are going to potentially look at your handshake profile um, between the time you register for a session and the actual career fair, potentially. So it's important to log into Handshake. Um, you do that using your regular WVU login information. Um, and we'll show you where that link is at the end. If you go to the Career Services website, uh, you can search Handshake and it'll come up on our search results. You'll also want to upload your resume that's been updated. And also hopefully that resume has been reviewed by someone, whether it's someone from career services um, or during one of our career prep events that are coming up in the next two weeks, um, which are quick 15 minute sessions where um, we'll give you some immediate feedback on some tips that you might want to address before you start using a career fair. Or if you've had, you know, I know this week we've also had employer uh, resume review times, you know, that would count, but make sure someone has looked at it before you start using it because, you know, they might catch something that you didn't catch. And then also your handshake profile is partially built on the information that's from WVU star system. So your name, your major, your GPA, all that is kind of imported in from star, but you want to make sure that it's correct. Um, sometimes if you are in the process of changing your major, um, it's going to have whatever your current major is in the system. So make sure that it's, you know, capturing your graduation date, what year you are in school, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, or master's and PhD students. Uh, make sure it has your right GPA and if you are authorized to work in the U.S. Because uh, there are some employers that search based on those criteria. And then also make sure you select the type of jobs that you're looking for, where those might be uh, located at, and what type of roles um, they fulfill, all right? So as I mentioned, every WV student has a handshake profile. Um, so one question I have for you, Laura, is you know, how do you use handshake um, related to the career fair prior to it and their profile specifically. 
So we'll actually, this part is important to us um, as well. We will, instead of waiting for students to sign up for um, career, career slots, we will go out and search through Handshake to see what students are interested in our job field, if they have the right major, um, the right work experience. Um, so we can we can always reach out to them ahead of time as well to grab their attention and hopefully get them signed up for a career fair time slot. So it's I'd say it's really important because it definitely works both ways um, for employers to be able to search you and find you and your credentials um, so you can get as many opportunities as you can. Gotcha. Um, that's great advice. One other thing I would kind of tag on to that is many employers when they post jobs to Handshake will put um, restrictions based on some of that criteria. So if they have an internship, they may only be looking for, you know, current sophomores and juniors uh, for this upcoming summer. So they may restrict it to those classes or they may be looking for people from certain majors. If you log into Handshake and that's not your major, you may not even see that job because Handshake won't show you jobs that um, you're not qualified for, to apply for. And similarly in the career fair aspect of it, when you see those uh, sessions that are there, whether they're group or one-on-one -on -one sessions, sometimes employers will put restrictions on there as well. So if they're saying, you know, we're only hiring full-time people right now. So we only want to talk to seniors and graduate students um, because they assume those people are graduating in the next, you know, six months. Uh, you're not going to be able to register. You won't even see that session exists if you're a sophomore. So it's important that your profile is up to date and accurate so that the things that are relevant to you are the things that you're seeing in Handshake. All right. So one way to find the virtual career fairs on Handshake is first you have to log in. When you log in, there's an event tab in the upper left-hand corner. And you'll see, uh, actually when you log in, this, the front page will just have event recommendations based on your major and your rank and your GPA and those type of things. So if you are in construction management uh, or civil engineering or one of those type of degrees that Laura is looking for and they have an information session coming up, it will appear on your front page. If you're a, um, let's say, a biochemistry student that is not what Laura is looking for, that won't be suggested to you. So look at the recommendations, because again, that's based off the things that you put on your profile. Um, the events page is in the upper left-hand corner. When you log in, you can click on that. And then there's a little um, button that you can say, like, show me the career fairs. And you'll see the five career fairs that we have this semester. Uh, one of which is a mock career fair, which is next Thursday. So if you want to just learn how to log into the system and register for sessions, uh, you can do that as well. Um, you can also see uh, employers. So if you know, here's my top 10 employers that I've been researching over the past year that I really want to um, try to find. Uh, if you follow them, so if you find the employers in Handshake, there's a little star on their profile. And if you do that, anytime that employer does something in Handshake related to WVU, whether, whether it's creating an information session uh, posting a job or registering for a career fair, Handshake will automatically send you an email as soon as that happens and says, hey, this employer is coming to this event. Are you interested? Um, and then again, that's where you can kind of see the employer pages. So uh, one question I have for you, Laura, is, you know, we're talking a lot about the career fairs and those are at the end of the month. Um, should students attend other information sessions, even if they're planning on attending the group session at the virtual career fair? Definitely. What we do, um, we like to see those students in, um, get involved in any event, uh, hopefully all the events that we, that we put on, because we want to see their interest. We want to see their level of interest in our company. And when we're looking at the list of students and creating our interview schedule, we'll 
we tend to prioritize the students that have put in the time and the effort to attend not only just the career fair, but the group sessions and the info sessions as well. And, and that's, we take attendance. So, you know, if you're, if you're attending an info session as well, make sure if there's attendance being taken that you're on that list. So if there's a, another way that you can put yourself in a good position to get a follow-up interview, um, then I'd say that is definitely the way to go because that's definitely how, how we go through our process. Outside the uh, information sessions and the career fair, are there other ways in which you're reaching out to students across the country? We do. Um, we do a number of things on campus and it varies from uh, offering to do guest lectures in uh, classrooms on any number of topics related to engineering or just having information um, just more about WT in general. And then we like to get involved in student organizations as well and get connected um, with the students on that level too. Um, and we've in the past, obviously in person, um, we tend to make more trips to campus, meet everybody in person. It could be something as simple as, um, you know, hosting a resume workshop, hosting a pizza trivia night, anything like that. So for us, for us, the sky's kind of the limit on the events that we would that we would put on. Um, and it really just depends on the needs of the student body or how we think the best way to get connected with, with students. So, and also we're, we're always open to opportunities that uh, professors approach us with um, for ways to get connected. If student organizations wanna reach out to us to get events set up, um, it's definitely a two-way street and uh, definitely something that we uh, prioritize and and like to do and get connected with the students. Great. And that, those are all great ideas. And, you know, just take note, students, if you're in a professional organization out there um, at WVU, uh, make sure you're, you know, possibly reaching out to employers or alumni that are at different uh, organizations and inviting them into your groups. That's a good way to build your network as part of your job search process part of your internship search. Um, that's a good way to, you know, gain information on what you're going to be asked at one of these possible career fairs or at an interview later or at an information session. So, so the next thing we want to talk about is like getting hired, right? You know, that's kind of the whole point of attending a career fair is you want to get hired. The one thing I want to note is a lot of times students think like, okay, the resume is what's going to get me that job. Um, just remember the resume gets you an interview and you're trying to make a good impression during a career fair to make sure that the employer pays attention to your resume and that you float to the top of their candidate pool to possibly get an interview. Okay. So some of the things you can do to prepare for the virtual career fair are you want to make sure you find out what employers are attending. As I mentioned, if you look at the list today um, for the STEM career fair, I think we're in the 60. Uh, or so employers are registered, that number will grow between now and uh, as we get closer to the career fair. Um, I would anticipate it'll probably be somewhere in the 80 to 90s. So you'll wanna check back on a pretty regular basis to see who's been added on and what type of students uh, or graduates are they looking for. And that's part of the research. What is it that that's, that company does? Are they a possible fit for you? Are they looking for people that have skills like you? And you'll wanna prepare some talking points. So if you, uh, just like you would for an in-person fair, you wanna kind of prioritize who you wanna talk with, spend a little bit of time looking at their company profile, looking at their company website, and uh, see what some of the things they may have been in the news in a positive way uh, recently. So do they have new research that's going on or do they have a new product that's been launched um, how did they do in their last quarterly re results if they're a private company? So those are all good things to know because again, uh, as Laura mentioned, you kind of have, you're showing interest in that company and possibly wanting to join that, okay? Um, and then finally, you're gonna wanna include some of those things uh, as the little blue dot says 
in your elevator pitch. And when you're introducing yourself during that um, one on one time, you want to kind of say, uh, and we'll get to this in the next slide, but you're going to want to introduce who you are, and you might drop in one of those things of I'm really looking forward towards, you know, joining your team in this new office that you just launched in Charleston, West Virginia. Um, so Laura, what type of tips would you encourage students to do prior to the career fair? Definitely get out on um, the website of whatever company that you are interested in. Um, we definitely like to see somebody who is ready to come up to the table and let you know, you know, what projects that we have going on. It shows that they're interested in the company um, and they put in time and effort to find out more. Um, also, if you happen to know any alumni that are working for the company that you're looking into, it would be always a good idea um, to reach out to them and ask them, you know, what helped them get their job um, at WT or, or any other employer as well. Um, and then you can ask them about what they're doing uh, in their job. And that's, that's great information to add to a conversation um, at a virtual career fair too. And um, I would also say just in preparation, um, definitely, definitely do your best just to be confident. Um, I know we'll go into the elevator pitch in just a minute, but um, just putting your best foot forward and being bright and happy to be there and ready to go is really what we want to see because it's really the first impression you're going to get. Um, we're not worried about weeding out all of your technical credentials at this um, time in the game. So uh, definitely just be yourself, I would say, is the, my best advice for preparing for, for a career fair. Gotcha, all great advice. Um, just to piggyback on one of uh, your suggestions, you know, those of you that might be listening, if you're a sophomore, you might be like, I don't know any WVO alumni. Um, there's two suggestions or three suggestions I would have. One, if you're involved in your professional organization and you're a sophomore, uh, the juniors and seniors are going to be alumni when you're a senior. So start to network with the students that are currently in your major um, at WVU so that you get to know them because they're going to walk the path before you, right? Um, second, there's a couple other tools. You can connect with alumni if you do a search for um, people on LinkedIn at the company and then the LinkedIn will typically say like, hey, this person also went to your university. And then the other thing is to, um, uh, the WVU Alumni Association has a website called WVU Connect. And that's a good way you as a student can log in there and search for WVU alumni that are um, in certain areas or with certain employers or graduated from certain degrees. And you can connect with them to have some of those conversations Laura suggested. All right, so next up is an elevator pitch. And if you never heard the term elevator pitch, really think about it as this is how you're introducing yourself to someone else for the first time. So whether you're at a networking event, like one of those information sessions that Laura mentioned, um, whether you're attending a conference and you're introducing yourself to fellow students or employers or other faculty members and graduate programs you might be interested in, it's a way just to introduce yourself, tell them what you're currently doing, um, maybe touch on something you've done in the past, especially if you're talking to an employer, if you've done something that's directly related to them, or let's say you were an intern for them last summer and you're applying for a full-time position, that's a good time to tell them that. Um, you might wanna throw in there some professional goals, like I'm looking to start a full-time position in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I see you have a position there. I'd like to learn a little bit more about that. So that's a good way to kind of finish that off to, you know, start the conversation between the two of you. Um, any tips that you would have, Laura, for how students might want to introduce themselves during that one-on-one uh, -on -one session? Sure. I would definitely um, give the recruiters a little bit of time to um, digest the looking over your resume. And I would keep your introductions like pretty brief and high level just to start out. And then, you know, you can start diving into the nitty gritty um, a little bit later into the conversation. 
Um, but again, just coming off um, confident and, you know, true to yourself, because I remember going through um, career fairs and, you know, meeting people who are going to be evaluating me for the first time. And I, I think the biggest recommendation I have is just be yourself and be confident in that because you know your experience, you know your abilities, and you're the best person to advocate for yourself. Um, and you can be confident in that. And so I would just keep it very high level while you're there, the kind of uh, position that you're looking for, either internship or full time. You can mention you've had some experience, you know, drop the job title or, or something along those lines of, of what that was. And then um, depending on the company, um, like I said, for us, location's a big thing. You can kind of lay your intentions out there um, of, of what you're seeking in, in that regard too. And then, and then follow where the, the conversation takes you. Gotcha. So if I was a civil engineering student, the way I would introduce myself tomorrow would be, hi, I'm Rob Baricelli. I'm a senior engineering student. Uh, last summer, I did an internship with your group. Uh, I'm really looking forward to joining your company again as full-time level. I'm really targeting like the Southeast. And I saw you had a couple of uh, openings in North Carolina and Georgia, and they're the ones I'm most interested in, right? That's all you have to do. It's a couple sentences, a quick little conversation to get it started. And then Laura would ask a couple questions kind of back on either what's based on my resume or whatever it may be. So it's, you don't have to memorize a lot of stuff. It's really just, what is it you want to communicate to the employer that's important to them? All right, so on the day of the virtual career fair, you want to make sure you dress professionally. And that was some of the feedback we did get from employers after the uh, fall events. Uh, since everybody was at home, some students didn't think that they needed to dress up. Um, so it's important, you should pretend like this is a real career fair. That's what the expectation of the employers are. Um, it's important to, we have a how to dress professionally on our website. So you'll wanna be in a suit and tie or uh, be pre presentable. You know, don't wear hats, hoodies, sweaters, um, you know, t-shirts, that type of thing. You, you want to pretend like this is, you're actually interacting with an employer uh, and this is a real job interview, okay? Um, you also want to really think about where you're doing this interaction at. Um, if you have roommates or if you have pets, make sure that you, you tell your roommates, hey, on the day of the career fair, I'm going to need you to be quiet from, you know, two to four uh, because I have sessions lined up. So, you know, if you could not blast your radio or um, not have friends over during that time, like have that communication well in advance so that you don't have to deal with it the day of. And if you have pets, make sure you have some type of alternative plan so that you don't hear barking in the background when you're talking with an employer. And then the other thing is you want to appear uh, in your best light, literally. Uh, make sure your face is well lit and they can see who you are. Don't have a ceiling fan behind you that's going to, you know, drown out your camera and make it look like you're in a shadow because of that. So make sure the light is in front of your face uh, and hitting your face to where the camera can see you uh, really well. And make sure the background is professional. Don't have anything that is um, potentially controversial. Um, so I know you're a college student, but you wouldn't want to have any um, party related paraphernalia behind you or posters that would promote anything. You can have decoration. They expect you to see your, your college room or whatever, but you still want it to be a representation of you professionally. Okay. All right. So Laura, are there any tips that you have uh, to be prepared on the career fair day for the students? Um, yeah, within that same breath, uh, neutral background, definitely, like you said, a big thing, because even still, when you start a chat, you're just taking in your surroundings. And if there's a lot of things going on in the backgrounds, you know, whomever's going to be inter interviewing you is just looking at those things. Um, even if it's, even if those are small things, I have a dog, so I make sure, you know, he is out of the room every time I have a big important meetings. Um, so that's really helpful um, as well. And then I double checking internet connectivity. 
Um, that's been a big thing for us and a, and a challenge for us um, in our day-to-day activities too. So trying to make sure you're in a spot where you have a good connection. And um, I know when I went through school, there were huddle rooms or study rooms that you could uh, check out. So that would probably be um, a good a good uh, opportunity to check that out as well. Gotcha. And you always want to have some backups just in case, you know, it's snowy right here in West Virginia. So, you know, if an accident happens and a telephone pole gets knocked out, you know, two streets over and knocks out your internet connection, uh, you need to have a backup. So you should have your phone ready. It should be charged so that if you have to move from a video thing over to a phone conference with the employer, you're able to do that pretty seamlessly. So just have that ready and available. All right, next up is during the actual session, when you're in the session um, in Handshake. One, uh, you have to arrive on time. Uh, you do not want to arrive late. So if you do schedule back-to-back um, appointments within Handshake for the career fair, make sure you're exiting them so that you're moving on to the next section um, as quickly as possible. Uh, you'll see that on the day of the career fair, you won't be able to get into the chat or into the room with the person you want to talk with typically until two to five minutes beforehand. That's when the link becomes available. Before that, it'll be kind of grayed out. It'll still be on your schedule, but you won't be able to go in until it's your time. Uh, One last thing related to that, realize that you're not going to be able to register for sessions that have already started. So if you wanted to sign up for a session that started at 430, you could do that now. If the session started at four, that registration would be closed because we're past four o'clock, okay? Um, you wanna make, make sure that you're maintaining eye contact and that you're listening to what they're asking you. Um, related to eye contact, remember that's also part of your setup. If you have a laptop, make sure that it's on a desk or a table that is stable. Um, I would encourage you to maybe put some books under it so that the camera is kind of at your eye level so that it's you're not having to angle your screen to look up your nose type of thing. Um, So you wanna make sure that it's stable and looking at you. I also encourage students to maybe put like a little sticky note next to the camera with a smiley face on it, just to remember like, that's where I need to look. And then also make sure you develop some questions for whoever you're talking with to kind of help the conversation go on. And also again, to show interest in that company. All right, so what type of, tips would you give students during uh, that they should kind of have during the actual uh, career fair day? So I might suggest um, moving either your phone or your laptop back a little bit so they can see more of your hand gestures and things like that because that is something we do miss uh, because we're not in person obviously. And then as far as asking questions goes, Um, We do get this a lot, and I think it is a great question to ask is, at least our recruiters, they are actual project managers in our field. So what a day in their life looks like. Um, It gets the conversation going, gets the conversation going. It gives you a little bit of information about the actual job that you're going after. And it also gives the interviewer uh, a, a chance to describe and, and kind of show off what they do uh, on a day-to-day basis as well. Gotcha. And just remember, you need to register for these sessions ahead of time. Don't register at the last minute because I know in the fall, a lot of employers looked at their sessions that morning and they were like, oh, I have an appointment at 1, 1 2 o'clock, 2.30. Um, if someone registered for one of those empty spots in, in, in between there, sometimes the employer didn't capt- capture that quickly. So we had students that are like, oh, the employer didn't show up. Most of the time that was because the student signed up for it like literally a half hour before the session. So um, please make sure you sign up for your sessions well in advance. Um, one of the questions from the chat room is, are we going to get an email for sessions? Uh, when you register for the session in Handshake, it does... Uh, initiate an email to you to kind of say like you signed up for this during the career fair it's going to happen here 
Um, and Handshake will also generate a reminder the day before, like, hey, you signed up for uh, sessions tomorrow for the career fair. And I believe there will also be one that morning that says, remember today is the career fair. And when you log into the career fair, you'll see your schedule and you'll be able to see all the dates and times that you registered for, okay? Um, so the final thing that you need to take care of is the day after the fair. Uh, your preparation of the job search process doesn't end when the career fair is over. You need to do a follow-up email to the employers that you've talked with. And typically you want to do that within 24 hours. An email is perfectly appropriate. So it's important that when you're talking with people during the career fair, you're getting their name and their contact information so that you can send that email the next day. Um, you may want to take notes during your session to kind of remember what you talked about during each session. Um, and if you have the opportunity to do so, you know, connect with those people on LinkedIn so that you can continue that conversation beyond the career fair. And uh, like Laura said earlier, kind of keep developing that, um, that relationship. So any tips that you might have, Laura? Sure. So we have, for every school that we particularly recruit at, we do have a lead recruiter in charge of that school. So we have a WT lead recruiter for West Virginia. So, and then of course, um, other members of our recruiting team. So whomever you spoke with um, during that career fair, just make sure you get their, their name and their contact information um, and keep that somewhere safe. And also to follow up is, is key, not just after, after 24 hours, after a couple of days, but even a week after, two weeks after. Um, I know our process in particular is quite slow. Um, it's sort of the nature of the beast being a very decentralized company um, with no centralized um, overarching recruiting department. Um, so for us, student follow-up is is key and definitely don't ever feel like you're being a nuisance if you reach out to to us certainly or another company because we still want to see that that interest in our company as well and the more you follow up the more you're getting your foot in the door awesome all great advice so just before we move into the q a session I've just put up on the screen um, the career fairs that we have scheduled for the semester. And these are the four. Um, depending on your major, you may actually, I know we're kind of talk, talking about the STEM career fair for uh, February 24th, but realize that um, depending on your major, there may be employers at some of the others that may also be interested in you. Um, so for example, one of the example I normally give is, you know, if you're a biology student, there's going to be employers at the Ag and Natural Science Fair that are going to be potentially interested in you, and they're going to be potentially more federal or state agencies at that career fair, potentially. At the STEM and, natural, uh, STEM and Career Internship Fair, those are all the engineering and science uh, math majors. At the Career and Internship Fair, that's where typically the behavioral and social sciences, business and economics, and the health employers are typically there. Um, so a biology student would have a potential employer at all three of those. And then finally, we'll have a professional education fair for those people that wanna work in the education system. So not just teachers, but speech language pathologists, nurse, nurses, uh, occupational therapists, physical therapists, you know, schools hire all of those people. So um, that's a great opportunity to potentially, not just for those people that wanna teach, but also people that wanna work in school systems. So we also have a mock career fair that's scheduled for next uh, Thursday from two to four. You can register for that and sign up for sessions just to go through that process so you know what you're doing when the real career fair day actually comes, okay? And then the other thing we have for the career fairs is on the day of the career fair, there will be a Zoom link on the front of the career fair page when you log in. And that's kind of like our Q&A help session. So if you have any issues, um, you can jump in there and you'll talk to one of us from Career Services and we can help you problem solve, whether it's you figuring out where you need to go or somebody didn't show up or you're having technical difficulties or you're trying to reconnect with an employer. Um, just jump into that Zoom room and we can kind of help you out, okay? Any tips that you might have for uh, 
the students learn? Um, I think we wrapped it up pretty nicely. I did, going off of what you were saying about attending different fairs, um, you know, it, it while it might be a STEM career fair, you know, a lot of big companies, they all have marketing departments, they all have IT departments, and, you know, they all have accounting departments. So I would say the more career fairs you attend, the better. Um, certainly do your research beforehand, but uh, even if we are attending a STEM career fair as a company and somebody who is interested in marketing or IT, they come up to us, um, we still pass that information along to those particular departments. So there could still be some opportunities there um, if, you, if you attend some more career fairs. So we have one of our first questions um, in the chat room, and it's, uh, I assume, from a, a petroleum and natural gas uh, engineer it, or somebody related to that. It, it's been hard for the oil and gas industry during the COVID. Um, obviously, there's you know, been a downturn in oil prices and production right now. Um, are oil companies going to be at the career fair? So um, one, I don't know off the top of my head because, I, like I said, it's constantly changing, so I don't memorize those. Um, I would encourage you to go in there and look, but I think maybe a, a more general question that I'll kind of pose to Laura that's kind of related to that is, you know, a lot of students feel like um, because of COVID, the job market has changed um, based on either there are a lot more people out there in the applicant pool because there's a higher unemployment rate uh, or they've been laid off or furloughed. Um, or there's just less jobs because companies are doing less right now. Can you speak a little bit to that, like how your company is approaching now and what they envision for post-COVID? Sure, absolutely. So at least for the um, construction and for wedding Turner, Turner in general, um, I wouldn't say we're not as affected by um, our candidate pool expanding because there's a lot of people around us who are getting laid off um, because we exclusively recruit from uh, college campuses and we really that's not our mile model to hire uh, mid-career um, folks to hire or excuse me to uh, fill any higher level positions we promote from within um, and, and as far as COVID it's really, things definitely have uh, slowed down for us as I think they have for everyone. However, it really has depended on the type of industry that uh, we're looking at. And we're pretty much in all commercial construction industries. Um, some industries are pretty slow, uh, such as hospitalities. You know, we're not building a lot of hotels right now. And, but on the other hand, some industries are still chugging along just as they normally would, uh, such as healthcare. Um, and even some uh, secondary education um, and um, let's see, it's K through 12 and then higher education. We're still doing some work in, in those fields too, uh, just because nobody's on campus or nobody's in that in the classroom right now. So it's a perfect opportunity to get work done in that particular industry. So it definitely depends um, on the company that you're looking at. And uh, especially for construction, um, the, the industry that we're talking about. But I can say um, our hiring needs in particular are a little bit less, um, but not by much. And uh, we are a I, I would say a, f a fast growing company, we usually hire about 700 new people every year. Um, and we're looking, we're definitely looking towards life after COVID and maintaining our pipeline of great candidates because we know that as soon as when everything opens up and things start to shake loose as far as uh, projects and work, we are going to be pedal to the metal again and definitely back to hiring at our um, normal capacity of what we're used to. Great. That's awesome to hear that you guys already are looking that far out. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of want to piggyback on that a little bit. 
um, just to kind of reinforce the students, realize that employers that are um, recruiting on Handshake and coming to career fairs at college campuses are intentionally trying to recruit people that have um, you know, no years of experience or, you know, one to two years if they're potentially a graduate student. Um, th they are intentionally trying to recruit those people. If they wanted to just put it out to anybody, they could put the position on their website or Indeed or Monster or LinkedIn or any of the other job search processes out there and get people that are in their mid-career or have a little bit more experience. Um, but realize that people that are recruiting on Handshake are intentionally recruiting college students. So it's a good place to start your job search and build from there. And obviously, depending on your major, you might need to expand out past Handshake. But at the very least, you should start there um, and then build off of that. Okay. All right. So there was another question of, are you going to, are there going to be uh, mobile companies? I'm guessing that's like telecommunication companies. And I honestly don't know that off the top of my head. Um, I would encourage you to look at the career fair and you'll have to kind of look through the employers and do some searches. And then the, another part of that was, can you tell me about the group sessions? Um, as I mentioned earlier, you might've joined late group sessions are uh, 30 minute long sessions that employers can talk to up to 50 students at a time in that session. Um, and then there's one-on-one -on -one sessions, there's one student and typically one representative from the employer. So if you join a group session, it's more to gain information or to have be part of a larger organization discussion. And, and that might be something you wanna do prior to your one-on-one -on -one session um, so that you can spend more time in the one-on-one -on -one session talking about yourself and really use the group session to learn more about the company, okay? Um, another question is, if you click on the uh, fair and then view all employers, you can see the employers who are coming. Yeah, so if you kind of click in, and I'll actually show you that now. So if you, of course the time helps. <laughs> so when you log into uh, Handshake, if you click on events, um, and then career fairs, it will show you the career fairs we have this semester. Um, for the STEM career fair, when you open it up, uh, you can register for the career fair up here, but that just gets you notified of when new employers are um, registering for the fair. What you want to do is actually, um, you can research employers either by searching the employers down here. So right now there's 65, um, or you can also see what employers are coming and what positions they may have. So you can see both your schedule, and as of right now, I don't have anything built, but on you can see this of the employer and what type of sessions do they have. So right now, they have 24 individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, let's scroll down to somebody else. West Virginia Department of Transportation has individual sessions um, as well as group sessions. And you'll see that change for each employer. And like I said, this may not be their complete schedule yet. They may only have group sessions up right now as they try to determine their staffing as they get closer to the fair, since we're still a couple of weeks away. So you can also search up here. Uh, when you click on all filters, you can do some searches based on criteria, like either your major or what type of position you're looking for, okay? And while we're doing that, I just want to say there's <clears throat> typically the, the main things you need to take away from this presentation today is you have to have a good resume. So we have resources on our website, uh, and I'll put all these links in the chat room. Um, so feel free to click on them so that you can review them later. And that is um, how to build a resume. There's templates down here, as well as a re resume checklist and action verbs to help you build that. If you have a resume and would like it reviewed, we have some career fair prep events where we are gonna be reviewing resumes um, starting next week. We have a website that helps you craft your elevator pitch. We also have a website that kind of uh, lets you know how to navigate uh, Handshake in order to register for the career fair. Um, 
many of the topics we discussed today are on our How to Prepare for a Virtual Career Fair website. And then finally, after the career fair, you want to um, have a thank you letter. And we have a template on here of what type of things you can include in your uh, email that you may send to employers. All right. And there was a reminder to make sure that when you are registering for the career fair, going back over here, <clears throat> in order to see these sessions, uh, you have to be registered for the career fair. So if you're not registered, um, you will not see these sessions. Thank you, Allie, for that reminder. And one last thing is if you want to upload your profile, if you click on, you'll just have a little icon up here. You can build your profile and you can add your cover letter and resume to documents. So that's readily available. And you'll wanna make sure that your document is visible. So you'll see whether or not it's visible or not. So if Laura wanted to search and look at my resume, she could see this one. She could not see the freshman one. Okay. All right, are there any last questions? All right, I don't see any coming in. So uh, I wanna thank everybody for attending today. Again, this recording will be available uh, in the future, in the next couple of days, hopefully, or next week. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can refer back to it. So I wanna thank uh, Kelly for being here and also Laura from, uh, and to give us the kind of employer perspective today. Thank you for having me. This was great. I hope everyone got a chance to get some things out of it and learn a lot. All right, I'm hanging around in case there are any last questions. It went really well. A handful of students that are still here. <laughs> if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. All right, it looks like they're all gone now. So thank you again, Laura, for joining us.